Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear friends, we are going to start new video series that will include modeling, analysis and design of steel structures using Midas Gen. So starting from this video in which we will model a simple steel truss shed resting on steel frames and then we will analyze this structure using Midas Gen. Actually this is part 1. In the next part of this video, we will learn how to design the elements of this structure using Midas Gen. Before getting started, if you are new to our channel, then please hit like and subscribe button and share as well with your friends and let's learn structural engineering together. One more thing, we have already started design course related to reinforced concrete structures. If you did not watch those videos, then please go and watch those. Links of those videos I am sharing in the description of this video. So let's get started. This is our software interface. In this structure, first we will model the truss and we will use the structure wizard. So go to the structure tab, base structures and truss. Now there are the three tabs. The first one is the input in which we can select the type. So we will go for this type. These are the bracings. So we want this number of panels. We want five number of panels. This is the legend. You can see the length L is let's say five meter and H2 height is 1.2 meter. Show dimension, it is showing the real dimensions. 1.2 is the depth and 5 is the length. And we want it to be the symmetric one. Right? Now go to the edit tab. Insertion, verticals. Yes, we want the verticals. Since we don't define any material or section properties, so leave it as it is. And then go to the insert. This is the insertion point where you want to insert this truss show number this is the insertion point let's say beam releases leave it for the time being we'll apply the beam releases manually and then click apply close so this is the truss this is built in the x z plane All right this is x and this is y this truss is in the x z plane now we can see in the work stream menu element the beam element select so the top and bottom chord is being assigned as the beam element and the verticals and the braces is assigned as the truss element now moving forward so this is the truss and we know that in the truss each element must carry the actual loads only but in reality it is not the case why because let's say in this truss the bottom cord is a continuous beam and carry the bending moments throughout the length similarly at the top cord this top cord is a continuous beam from this element to this and from this element to this is a separate beam so it is a continuous beam it's behaving as a continuous beam so we cannot say that it is only carrying the actual load now let's model the column first so select these two points and go to the nodes and element tab extrude and node to line elements and let's say we will have the column of minus five meter all right and apply so these are the columns now we want that the bending moment will not be transferred from the bottom cord to the columns or from the top cord to the columns all right so we will assign the beam releases just open the element local direction so that we can identify what is the starting and ending point of the element so for this element we have to assign the moment releases at the start and for this at the end similarly for this at the end and for this at the end and for this at the start as well 
okay so just select this start start and start go to the boundary tab and beam releases and we only want to release the start position and just click apply right similarly for this beam these two beams at the end okay now close this local direction okay now no further releases required for this truss now we will define the property so go to the property tab materials properties add and selecting the ASTM steel let's say A36 okay and go to the sections add Okay, since all the members are getting the same properties, so just uh, go to the work stream menu, selecting the beam elements, let's say brace. All the members are assigned as the brace, so just go to the beam and select, and let's say it's a cord, and we want the column as girder or column. Okay, so this is the 3d view all right this is the box sections top and bottom cords and these vertical and diagonal bracings of truss okay now we want this to translate in the positive y direction 0 comma 2.5 meter apart four times copy nodes and element attributes just check so that each and every nodal or element property must be replicated as well otherwise the only geometry will be replicated but the attributes will not so must check these two and click on apply okay now we want to model the girder so just go to create element and we select this girder make sure to check these two intersect node and element and click on this button and click on first point and second point so that this is intersected at each node this to this okay this to this as well okay now we want to model the purlins as well so just click on the hidden button and select only the nodes this now go to the extrude Yes, we forgot to define the Perlin section. Just go to copy, modify. This one. Oh. Per length 0, 2.5, 0 4 times right 1, 2, 3, 4 and click on apply. So, this is the per length. Click on this hidden button. So, these are the per length sections. Okay, since per length or and the truss braces are having the same color, so just go to this display option, draw random color apply now this color is not good this is 
something good color now so this is the modeling part just now selecting the lower nodes and applying the support conditions define okay this is now the pin supports since our purlin is having a span of 2.5 meter now we want that this two elements of purlin is acting as a single beam which means that these two purlins will continuous beam at this joint but at this joint or this joint it is discontinuous simply support it so to do so we'll again go to the beam releases and applying that so selecting let's say in the top opening the local direction so for this purlin is a starting we want to release and similarly for this starting we want to release beam releases apply okay similarly for this and this and it must be released okay so now i close the local direction okay so beam releases have been applied correctly now we want just open the support conditions as well and we release now we want this column and this column delete we want only the truss at this location okay just click on this now we can see that by using the structure by using the truss wizard what the software do the software will assign at each element the beam releases we can see so just selecting the beam activate only and by selecting this we can see this is selection only this and activate now just select beam releases delete apply now again start 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 apply okay similarly end and end apply now it is applied correctly now we'll apply the loadings so to do so just go to the load step static load cases define the load cases first that live self weight minus 1 add regarding modeling aspect of this structure i am going very fast because i have discussed many basic things regarding the modeling in my previous videos if you don't watch it then please go and watch i will share the link in the description of all the videos now we will apply the loadings on to our structure so the self weight we have already assigned now for the roof loads we are having the corrugated sheet as a roofing on this shed uh, having 20 gauge so its weight is around 0.08 kpa and we have the live load of around 2 kpa so we will use the floor load command so just go to the load step and assign floor loads in which we first define the floor loads name it as roof under the dead 0.08 is for the 20 gauge roofing sheet and live load as 2 and remember to assign with the negative sign so that it is applied in the direction of gravity uncheck the sub beam weight because we modeled the purlins now add and close now we will apply that loading 
to apply just go to assign floor loads load type is roof that we have defined just now distribution one way we will select four points enclosing an area remember these are our purlins these are our purlins so we have to assign that area load uh, using the floor command and that will automatically convert it into the line loads so click on this nodes defining loading area and remember to select the area perpendicular to elements which we want to apply the loads first let's say this this direction is perpendicular to beams first otherwise the load will apply in the orthogonal direction so you can see the area load is automatically distributed over the purlins as uniformly distributed line loads all right now if i select parallel to purlins first then what happen see this the line load is applied in the orthogonal or perpendicular direction not we want so control z and click on this 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 and this all right now display so this is the live loads all right applied and this is the dead load 0.0 it is showing 0 kN per meter but it is not actually in the case we can just go to this option under the load step load value click on this and to 3 all right so this is the loadings apply dead load all right and then run the analysis f5 only one warning message are found and what is the message it is singularity error this is a 3d structure in which we assign some elements as truss so the singularity error may occur so we can ignore this and proceed just go to the result step forces beam forces under the dead load let's say my apply actually beam diagrams my apply solid fill apply so this is the beam diagrams let's say select girder and activate only so this is the beam as we can see these this beam is simply supported over these two spans and this side girders are continuous beam okay activate all this is also the beam cords select only okay so this is under the dead the dead weight and under the live load so this is the point that we mentioned earlier before modeling that we cannot ignore the bending moment of this cords otherwise there would be instability in that structure must have to incorporate this bending but if we don't want to allow the transfer of this moment onto the girders and then to the columns for this cords so we can use the beam and releases as we just did here okay now activate all display truss forces as well let's say under the dead load these are the truss forces okay let's activate brace and activate cord select plus yes one thing i want to select braces as well as the cords simultaneously so just right click select so the braces only the braces is now selected but i want it to select the cords as well so right click on the cord and select plus will add the selection to the previous selection and activate the selected one all right so these are the forces now yes we can only view the forces for tension so this is the members having the tension only and compression these are the members having the compression only 
okay so we can shuffle it or both values apply let's say maximum because it is overlapping so we can see it is in the clone newton so these are the forces now we can define the load combinations in the steel auto generation AISC LRFD 16 and OK. Close. Now, under the load combination number 2, 1 plus 1.4 dead and 1.6 live, we can see that we are having the forces like this. OK. We can have the force table selecting the rust combination, let's say this one, for all the members. Okay, so this is the forces, force I and force J. All right, so this is the this is regarding the force. And for the deformation, we can check the deformation under the deformation button. Deformation contours. Let's say this load combination, service load combination, and deform. Nodal deformation and click on apply. So, this is the deformation with respect to nodes. Just click animate, ok. This is the animation. With respect to nodes only, ok. If you want, if we want to see the displacement in x direction only. So just click on dx and so this is the displacement in x only, this is a displacement in y only and this is the complete deformation picture. Okay. So this deformation is with respect to nodes only but if you select the three dots in front of this deform command so you can see that the deformation type is selected as nodal so just select the real deformation and apply ok so you can see now the deflected shape of column as well the real deflections see the difference nodal deformation only this deformation ok the purlin is straight let's say because only the nodal displacement is occurring so the result is okay the element deformation cannot be viewed from this because this is the complete element this is the complete element so how much the nodes how much its i th and j th node is displaced it is what we show by the nodal deformation but for the from the real deformation it is actually showing the deformed shape throughout the member, each and every member. Just concentrate and see this one. Alright. Animate, apply. This is the real deformation. If we want to see the nodal displacement at each point, the details so just go to the deformation and search displacement and select the node that you want to find the displacement just let's say this node so the displacement details ish will be shown in the message window below it is saying that let's say millimeters now let's just select it again So it is now showing in the millimeter minus 9.4 exponential minus 1 it means that minus 0.94 mm it is displaying in the x in y and in z so this is up for today this was the analysis part for this structure in the next video we will see how to design this structure using AISC 
design specifications. See you in the next video.